Hey guys and welcome to another block spotlight. In this spotlight I will be taking a look at portable tanks. These are tanks introduced by the thermal expansion mod and in thermal expansion 3 which I'm using here there are five different types of portable tanks. In the thermal expansion 2 mod you only had one as far as I know. So before we get to the actual portable tanks I'm going to take a look at their crafting recipes because they're quite, there's quite a few of them. So. Let's first look at the basic one, the regular portable tank. This one is fairly cheap, all you need is 4 blocks of glass and these have to surround this copper ingot in the, in the center there. So that gives you one regular portable tank. Alright, then we have the hardened portable tank. This is essentially an upgrade from the uh, regular portable tank. And what you can do is either have a regular portable tank in the center here and surround that with invar ingots of, or you can basically start from scratch and use the crafting recipe for the regular portable tank but get some invar ingots in the corners of the recipe and then you get a hardened portable tank as well. Alright, next up is the reinforced portable tank. This one is an upgrade from the hardened portable tank and this requires the hardened portable tank in the center and you have to surround that by hardened gloss. Now, yeah, there we are. Hardened gloss or an equivalent like the uh, fused quartz from Ender.io. But yeah, hardened gloss from, ter uh, from thermal expansion surrounding the hardened portable tank. So you need four of those. All right, then next we have the resonant portable tank. And this is es essentially the most, uh, well, the best portable tank, let's say. The one that is able to hold the most liquid. All right, and so that's again an upgrade, this time from the reinforced portable tank. And to make this, you need to surround a reinforced portable tank with some endrium ingots. Sorry, sort of hard to pronounce, so endrium ingots. And these ingots are made, uh, let's see if I can find it, yeah, there we are, in the induction smelter. And they basically combine pyrocium dust with two pieces of ender blend. And then you get endrium ingots. So the Indrium blend is made by uh, placing three uh, pieces of tin dust or pulverized tin in your uh, crafting grid along with a pulverized shiny metal and of course also a bucket of resonant ender. Uh, the resonant ender is of course made in the magma crucible by uh, smelting sort of, well, by turning an ender pearl into a liquid, let's say. All right, so let's go back. And then we also have the pyrocium dust which is made using some sulfur, then some pulverized coal or coal powder or coal dust, and some redstone, and finally some blaze powder. So that's how you obtain these endrium ingots. Now I said this is the most powerful or the largest tank in the mod, and that's sort of true, but you still have the fifth one here, which is the creative portable tank. And as the name suggests, this is one you can only obtain in creative mode. So this one does not have a crafting recipe. So you can only spawn this into the game. All right. So those are the crafting recipes for the five tanks. And now let's have a look at these. So we have the portable tank, the regular one over here. This can hold eight buckets of fluid. Then we have the hardened one, which can hold the uh, double of that, which is 16 buckets. Again, the reinforced portable tank has double the amount of storage space, which is 32 buckets. And the resonant portable tank has 40, uh, 64 sorry, uh, buckets of space, uh, well, of space, <laughs> space for 64 buckets. All right. And finally, we have the creative portable tank. Now, this only holds one bucket, but once you have a bucket of fluid in there, it turns into an infinite source, so it will never run out. So that's basically how the creative one works. Again, as I said, you cannot craft this, you can only spawn it into the game. Now I've got a little setup here to demonstrate how these work. So these here are fluid ducts. I also did a spotlight on those, so go check that out if you don't know how these work. And basically the fluid ducts have the ability to, uh, well, forcibly remove liquid from a container, let's say. They sort of act like pumps to get liquid out. However, with these tanks, you don't need that because they have an input and an output system. So over here, I've got a simple tank from open blocks and let's, let's put some water in there. Now, currently I've got uh, these five tanks set up here, but as you can see in the tooltip at the top, 
all these four last ones are set to output mode and the first one here is set to input mode. And you can see that the, uh, the bottom here has an orange square. That means it's on output mode, uh, which essentially means that it will try to output as many, well, as much fluid as it can through the bottom of the, uh, the tank, as long as something is connected to it, of course. And over here, this one has a blue square, which is also the default. So if I place any of these tanks down, it defaults to a blue square. All right. So this is the input mode. That means that it will take uh, fluid into it. So let's let's add some uh, water in here. And first I have to set this to output. So I've got this fluid duct set up to pull uh, liquid out of this tank here. And I'm pouring some water in there. And as you can see, it will all go straight into this first portable tank because this is set to input mode and none of the other tanks have any fluid in it. Okay, so you might be wondering, well, what do I do to, to change this? So it outputs, well, just right click it with your crescent hammer. Now it will output the fluid. So this one here is set to output. So the, the fluid won't go back into this tank. So it's sort of stuck in the, in the fluid duct right now. But let's say I change this one here to input mode, just again by right clicking it with the crescent hammer. And there we go. All of the water is slowly pouring into the hardened portable tank here. And the same thing is true for this one and of course also this one here and finally we have the creative one here now this one fills up really fast as you can see it takes one bucket and as i mentioned before that's an infinite source now so if i you know i'll, I'll switch this one to input as well if i now switch this output it should simply fill up all of the tanks completely as you can see, because it's just a uh, rip while well, duplicating the fluid in there. So it's completely filling up all of the tanks now. And that's the power of the creative tank. So it allows you to create sort of an infinite, um, well, an infinite source of any fluid in the game, essentially. Well, any fluid that's registered in the uh, or dictionary, but uh, by now every mod should be doing that. So yeah, every fluid in the game, basically. So that's how these work. Now you might have noticed that there's also one of these squares on the top. However, unlike, and as far as I'm aware anyway, unlike the uh, bottom one, you cannot switch these to output because normally, and with any other tank as well, you can only have water flowing down. So for example, uh, if you have a large multi-block tank, you can only uh, retrieve fluid from the top block if you have fluid in there and not uh, it will only flow out completely if you attach a pipe to the bottom. So that's basically how that works. So you only, you're only able to retrieve fluid uh, with the input output system from the bottom of the tank. And the top is a simple input again. So yeah, that's essentially it for these tanks. I hope you guys enjoyed this, vi uh, this video. If you did, please like and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one. Hey guys, just a quick note, something I forgot to add in the video. Now, the portable tanks here, you can break these with the pickaxe, but when you do, you will get the portable tank back without the contents in it, so the fluid will be lost. Now, if you make a crescent hammer, like I've got right here, so you just need a tin ingot and three iron ingots to make this, you can uh, pop them off of wherever you've placed them without actually losing the content. So you just hold the crescent hammer, then hold the shift key and right click it with your mouse. And there we are. You've got your portable tank and it's got the eight buckets of water in there, which were in there previously. So it won't lose its content when you uh, pop them off with the crescent hammer. So that's just something I wanted to add real quick.